Hi, welcome to Naval Gazing on valleyindy.org and 103.5 WNHH, New Haven's community radio station. Today's episode is brought to you by Valley Gives Back, a new initiative of the Valley Community Foundation. Adding a charity to your estate plan creates a legacy that tells future generations what causes matter to you during your life. Your action inspires others to follow your lead and to make a difference. With a planned gift, you have the power to impact your community forever without affecting your current lifestyle. For more information, visit valleygivesback.org. The Valley Gives Back is an initiative of the Valley Community Foundation, connecting private philanthropy to the long-term public good of the Valley. Plan now, give later, impact tomorrow. Valleygivesback.org. the news For the info we gave you the clues Owners' profits were always sky high Change in market now threatens our lives Post literation, critical reading, dumb down nation Signs have been breeding TV sucking ideas from our head Discourse just about dead will ride the dinosaur. Yeah, ride the dinosaur. Can you hear me? Yo, yo, yo. Hey everyone, welcome to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indie Podcast. I am Eugene Driscoll, a reporter who lives in Derby, and I'm joined by fellow Valley reporter Ethan Fry. Hello, Ethan. Hello, good morning. Also joining us and making a little noise in the background there for this very special podcast is my seven-year-old son, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello. You got to get closer to that microphone, Hello? bro. How do you think Jake Paul does it? He gets right up to that microphone, okay? He doesn't have one. So we're recording this on Friday, December 15th to air on Monday, December 18th. It's been a busy but unusual week here at the Valley Indy. My son, Jack. Woke up Tuesday morning about 3 a.m. with a 102-degree temperature, and that fever's remained high all week. He's sick as a dog, causing him to miss school all week, causing me to stay home, take care of him to the best of my ability. Right, Jack? We've been home together all week. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, okay, people aren't going to be able to hear that. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and to the best yeah, of my yeah. ability is a relative term, because when this all started on uh, Tuesday, Can I texted my wife, Autumn, And asked her to come home from work because I had both Jack and my daughter, Emma, four years old. She was sick, too. So I was just overwhelmed. But, all right, so, Jack, let's start off. People want to know, you're the biggest Valley Indy fan on earth from from what I hear. No, I'm not. People can't hear you unless you speak into that microphone. No, I don't like the Valley Indy. You don't like the Valley Indy? What do you mean by that? Uh... Other than, I don't care about the news. You don't care about the news? That's the problem with the country today. What if the news comes, smacks you in the head? You'll care then. <laughs> no, I still don't care about the news. Uh, what do you want for Christmas? Let's go over all the things that you're not going to get because you don't like the news. What are some things you're looking for Christmas this year, bro? 52, 78, 500, billion Roblox gift cards. Roblox gift cards you want. All right. But, uh, you might, yeah, I'll be nice then. Sounds like that sounds like some common core math equation there. Why? All right, so you want Roblox. Roblox. What about a, go video, ahead? Is that a video game? I'm guessing. It is. It's a. Uh, it's this on. It's actually like to me. It's where like this whole net neutrality. It's where the internet's going. It's this online community, and within it. Uh, so it's not like a game you buy and, and put a disc in your in your Xbox. You can play it online. You can play it on your on your uh, iPad. On your Xbox. On your Xbox, right? And uh, it's all kind of user generated content, and like kids are insane over it. No. And there's all these different like obstacle courses and different types of arcades and sort of hide and seek type stuff. And it's this whole world, but it has those micro transactions left and right. It's free to play. But if you really get into uh, it, yeah. you have to kind of start your own. It has its own currency, but to buy that currency, you got to spend real money. Like Jack, can how many? Can I make a popular game so I can have millions of robux? Can you what? Can you make a popular game? 
Yeah, yeah but, but you got you got to figure that stuff out. I don't know. know. How I'll make a pop if you gave my robot. Neither do I. That's why I'm doing a podcast in Derby on my kitchen uh, f- uh, table here. I don't. You know, you're asking the wrong guy. Uh, no, I'm not. And people watch you know. Oh, okay. So if you have any advice to as to how my son Jack can become a millionaire by building games on Roblox, oh, I just want to build the games on Roblox. At least. At least 700 people have to play it. About 700 people have to play it. At least. Get closer to that microphone so I people can hope hear you. 50 billion, though. Me too, and they all give you, give you a couple. Uh, all right, 24, so. 24,000, but then I could be the most popular game. So my point is, though, with this net neutrality thing, that's what the internet's going to be. You know, you, oh, you want to get on uh, on YouTube? You want to read the Valley Indie site? Oh, Valley Indie, you want to post your videos to YouTube? You got you to gotta pay a little. It's going to be microtransactions everywhere. Jack, is there anything else you want to add? Because you really do. You are sick, and you look you look like you're sick. If no. You're, no? Oh, I just want to play Roblox. You just want to go play Roblox? All right. I hope. I really hope you enjoy the bag of kitty litter you're getting for Christmas. <laughs> I'm not you, kitty litter. I'm there's kidding. a lot of things you can do with kitty litter. It's sort of like Play-Doh. It's like kinetic sand. No, I don't want kitty litter. Well, have you ever played in kitty litter? No. Well, don't doubt it until you try it, okay? No, I don't want to. All right. All right, say bye to Ethan and to our millions of listeners on valleyindy.org. Uh, there's only like about 200, usually like 200. Get into that mic. Speak closer to that microphone. What are you saying now? There's usually 200 people watching. You're referring, you're referring to our... 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, never a million. Well, you're referring yeah. to our subscribers on YouTube because we only uh, have yeah. You know you get a million. You don't get. You never get a million views. You could get a thousand views. All right, I'm sick of these insults. Get off my podcast. I'm coming over there right now. Get, 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 get. Feel better, Jack. Come on, get out. Are you okay? What? You want to stay? You want to stay for the whole thing? You want to go play Roblox? I want to go play Roblox. All right, love you, bud. All right, sorry, I had to take care of that. So uh, that was my son, Jack, who will probably now blast Roblox in the background and uh, get us sued for copyright infringement. So uh, anyway, so uh, like, despite the fact I was sort of uh, on daddy duty this week, uh, Ethan managed to keep valleyindie.org afloat. Uh, it was stuffed with stories while I work from home. So it's been challenging. It's been a different week here at the Valley Indie. Uh, this is actually the third podcast we've recorded this week. That in and itself, in and of itself, is an accomplishment because we record and edit these things ourselves. Ethan spent a day in court this week. He covered a night meeting in Derby the other day. Uh, I managed to carve out stories on bond ratings, which I love to do. Did a story about a bullet being found at Derby High School Library. Story about uh, Derby Mayor Rich Zekin's decision to replace at the end of this month. The DPW director, Anthony DeFala, over there in Derby. So with those stories in mind, Ethan, I thought we would review what our readers have read the most this week on valleyindy.org. And Ethan, please, when you read these stories, do it with your trademark enthusiasm. Absolutely. Uh, Number Wait, you skipped. I'm trying to play Robert De Niro. It says right there in his... Enthusiasms. Which one? Enthusiasm. I'll stand by. You've already ruined it. Well, the one I, where he and... Uh, oh, my God. You're, you're talking again over it. was my admiration. What is that which gives me joy? Dang. Anyway, that was uh, uh, Robert De Niro. <laughs> or Ethan talking over Robert De Niro. I, I didn't hear it. Sorry. Was it, was, I hope it was him and Montaigne taking the rug out of that guy's house in Godfather 2. No, it was Robert De Niro as Al Capone in The Untouchables when he says, Enthusiasms. Right before he kills the guy with the baseball bat. So oh, anyway. The great, the great teamwork scene. Okay. Right, 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 right. Thank you for stepping all over that. I was trying to be... No uh, well, by stepping all over it, I'll, uh, it'll probably be saved from the uh, intellectual property uh, copyright lawyer. Five rules, seconds. YouTube. Five seconds. Fair use. Fair use. Uh, okay. Number five. Speaking of five. Uh, Zekin, you just mentioned Zekin will be appointing new public works director in Derby. Number four, warrant details how police developed bridge toss suspect. Number three, no injuries in Seymour house fire. Number two, second house fire in less than a week in Seymour. And number one, by far, violent bridge attack yields attempted murder charge. And that's what 
Eugene just mentioned, we uh, I went to court uh, on Tuesday to cover the arraignment of that suspect in the uh, assault on the Derby Shelton Bridge the night of Valley New Year, in which a man was thrown off the bridge, is now recovering from his injuries. Um, and just I, I just checked on that case. The, the suspect in that case has posted bond. And according to the court records online, his next court date is January 16th in Milford. Um, so that was, you know, uh, when it happened and when the police just pressed charges, uh, that was that was a very uh, interesting story that a lot of people read about. Yeah, it was definitely uh, shocking and just by its nature, nature sensational. You know, you have a, mm. a violent uh, altercation on the Derby Shelton Bridge uh, the day before Thanksgiving or the night before Thanksgiving. And a person gets tossed off the bridge, nearly loses his life over just some stupid stuff. I mean, there's just there, yeah. there's no reason. I think that's why it, it grabbed people. Allegedly, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the uh, what what it was about. And it was interesting the the police investigation, how they you know they got video of it from uh, bystanders, or and uh, they found an iPhone near the scene, and they traced they used that they traced that to the uh, suspect's girlfriend, and then to the suspect it's, uh, himself. So it was a. Uh, it was an interesting sort of investigation that had a lot of twists and turns and stuff. So, so and then I, we had as well. we had one reader ask, "Should Valley New Year be stopped?" Mm. Which, of course, triggered a lot of uh, angry responses. But I, I mean, hey, it's worth asking the question. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can stop Valley New Year because yeah, the- somebody pointed out it, like you can't really, you know like impose prohibition for a day every year but i you know i think that you could certainly not sort of celebrate it as much i don't know like no yeah i don't know because like that's always like when i was growing up um that would always be like a thing i I think it's just that like people home from college and stuff the day before thanksgiving it's like the first time people uh who haven't seen each other in a few months that were friends in high school or you know back uh together again so i i wherever it is i think you have a certain uh there's like that that aspect of of like it happens but uh, it's it's more of an event in the valley it seems for some reason right it's taken on a a little bit of a life of its own and of course you can't stop a concept you know that's what we're talking about here it's a hashtag but, you know, I, I've said this in, in past years when I worked at the News Times of Danbury, the paper where, where you worked with me, I used to work uh, Thanksgiving all the time for the extra money. And it was just so depressing because right around Thanksgiving every year, you know, I'd spend uh, before I'd go see my family, you'd have to call a, a, a dead college kid's family. You know, you'd yeah. have to walk up there and because college kids would come home, drive drunk and wind up dead so when we launched the valley indian we became aware of this valley new year concept i uh i would put on our facebook page or on twitter like please be careful because yeah. you're someone's gonna die just just keep and that it, mind. Yeah. and then and the, the seems- readers the reader reaction was was negative which yeah. was but they're like well you sh- everybody should be more careful and how dare you know everybody's offended you can't tell someone not to be drunk and stupid on uh you know a day before thanksgiving god forbid so I, I think like our part can be not to glorify it because right. we had somebody thrown off a bridge. Uh, that happened. A couple of years ago, a person was hit by a car on Valley New Year. Uh, mm, basically, I, the, right, I think at the bridge, too. Right. I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah somebody got hit, uh, you know. So, yeah, we can do a part and maybe not, not glorify it, you know. And, you know, the businesses have to ask themselves that question, too. And, uh, you know, you assume they're responsible businesses, but... If everyone's having these Valley New Year uh, drink specials and all that at the same time, you have to keep in mind when you get that many people together uh, walking, and that, that bridge is not well lit. That's the, that's another thing. I'm just going to throw that out there. You have to also acknowledge the fact that someone's going to get hurt <laughs> with that many people mm-hmm. drinking in, in a small area, and whatever you can do to limit that, and I don't know exactly what that is, you do. So anyway... I don't think there's nothing there. There isn't anything wrong with just asking that question. Yeah, and it, it, like you said, it, it's like every year there's a sort of like dread. Like I remember going to bed this. Like I, I went to bed early this year because I was in the. Uh, I did the five the Commodore Hall five K, and it, like 
or you, you go to bed that night being like, what am I going to wake up to? And then I woke up the next morning. I was like, oh, somebody, you know, there's a somebody f- was thrown off the bridge. Um, so and like you, you, it's just. Yeah. The fact you even yeah. think that says something not, right not there. Not great. You know. But. And and this year, you know, hey, we went to uh, Bad Sons Brewery, the first time I've ever uh, been in that place, and we did our, like, one, I did one Valley New Year post, but that was at 2 o'clock. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Anyway, that that's the little side topic there. I'm sure if I put this as the uh, the teaser to get people to listen to this podcast, we'll have a thousand people telling us we're idiots without actually listening to this podcast on our Facebook page. So I look forward to that. Uh, I mean, the other big story, I think, I mean, first of all, there's been a, a bunch of fires unfortunately, mm. uh, in the last couple of, uh, last two weeks. I mean, there's one on uh, the same night in Derby. A lot of these seem to be uh, uh, either electrical or trim- chimney fires, I guess. So I guess this is the time of year where you have to make sure your, your chimney's clean uh, and, and just keep an eye on anything you got plugged in. Uh, and candles, you know, that, that was another apparent cause. Uh, so anyway, there was that. And then we saw in Derby... New Mayor Rich Zekin encounter his first controversy of sorts. He decided to, or he is deciding in the process of bringing in a new public works director, which is a mayor appointment in Derby, which is sort of unusual. In Seymour, it is a a union job. Uh, You can't just, you know, the, the top elected official doesn't just pick who it is. So, but in Derby, as long as we've been covering the town since 2009, this is what happens. A new administration comes in and one of the uh, uh, things you get to do is to appoint, appoint whoever you want to be the DPW head. I think this has happened many times over the years, so it's not entirely unusual. It's not a huge surprise, given the history. I think Gary Parker is known in Derby, at least in the political thing, for uh, surviving a few mayors uh, in that job. That was unusual, from what I'm told. So anyway, he decided to replace uh, Anthony DeFala. We put the, a brief online. I'm trying to do a better job than I've done in the past uh, covering the uh, you know daily things happening with uh, Derby City Hall. Uh, so you know I just put it on as a brief the other night, basically a short story. And uh, yeah, the comments were like boom. There was a wave of comments. I think at this point there's a little over 30 comments, almost all in support of Anthony DeFala, sort of taking ex- uh, exception with the decision. So by the time this airs. Uh, Mayor Zekin may have appointed a new person. From what I understand, it's somebody coming from Hamden. It's somebody uh, not from within uh, Derby. It's somebody uh, uh, Mayor Zekin knows uh, somehow and I guess wants to He's take it. He's a former Hamden police officer, right? The mayor is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to ask yeah. that. Yeah, so he was hooked into, uh, I guess, uh, you know, people placing things over in Hamden. So we'll see what happens there. So I, I wanted to ask you, Ethan, because you attended the Derby Board of Aldermen meeting, uh, which was December 14th. And it came up, this issue came up in the public portion part of the meeting, right? Yeah, uh, actually, former Zeke's, Zeke's immediate predecessor, Mayor Degato, who, former Mayor Degato, who he defeated uh, in the November 7th election, uh, she got up uh, and said that, uh, you know, commended the Fala and said whoever Zekin appoints will have uh, big shoes to fill, I think were ex- exact words. Um, the, there was no other discussion about it um, either, but you know, the, the, she's the only one that spoke during the public portion and none of the uh, aldermen discussed it at all. Um, but after the meeting, uh, I went, I approached uh, Zekin um, and just to ask them, mainly based on all the wave of comments that you mentioned uh, supporting uh, Mr. Defala on our Facebook page, um, you know, if he had any reaction to that or whatever. And he said that, you know, he, yeah, he agreed that Defala did a, a good job. Um, but, you know, he pointed out that it's, like you said, it's a, a, essentially a, a political patronage job. You know, the, the new mayor has a, uh, tends to, uh, appoint someone new in that position. Um, I didn't ask specific, a couple of our readers had mentioned like, oh, is this what they're going to consolidate with Ansonia? I didn't ask them about that. But if, if, if you're hearing it's somebody from Hamden, then that's probably not going to happen, I guess. Yeah. For, and yeah, from what I heard, it's definitely somebody from outside Derby, which would be the first, um, not assuming it happens, non-resident uh, 
DPW director in Derby since we've been alive since 2009. Yeah, I, I think like... that's a little, yeah, that's, I mean, I guess that this is like the first challenge of uh, communicating to the people. He's got to, I guess, Mayor Zekin, and maybe this will happen by Monday, like I said, because we're recording this on Friday. He's going to have to convey why he made this decision in some way. You know, he's in kind of a strange spot because we don't know exactly. I mean, if he, he said he wanted to go, or his, his uh, chief of staff said they want to go in a new direction. I mean, maybe the philosophy here is that you put somebody in that position who is uh, not from the town, didn't grow up here. There, There's an argument to be made that that, in some uh, cases, is, is a better thing. I, that hasn't been stated. Yeah, but, uh, and I, I mentioned Ansonia and that, like, Mayor Cassetti did do that with, when he first got into office with the DPW uh, director's position, um, the guy, I'm, I'm forgetting his name, but he, I, I believe he was an Ansonia resident who had been the director under Mayor De La Volpe. Uh, Mayor Cassetti brought in a, a former Connecticut State DOT guy, um, but he left after two years uh, and he appointed uh, Michael D'Alessio. Yeah, I know, and I know in Derby, like, that's a job. Uh, that people salivate for i do know that that's like a job half the people you talk to in derby say they want sometime you know if we're if you're at a you know bar none at four o'clock on a wednesday you can hear people oh who's good it's, it's you know it's a it's a it's a talker yeah. anyway let's take a quick break and you're gonna hear me in a previous recording talk about valleygivesback.org if you remember anything from this podcast it, it's brought to you by valleygivesback.org, initiative of the Valley Community Foundation. And basically, it is a new way to try to support nonprofits, long-term uh, planning and plan giving, it's called. And it's one way you could support us if you so choose. So we'll be right back. Hi, this is Eugene, most likely interrupting myself to bring you a message from our sponsor. What will you be remembered for? Adding a charity to your estate plan creates a legacy that tells future generations what causes matter to you during your life. Learn more at valleygivesback.org. It's an initiative of the Valley Community Foundation. Plan now. Give later. An impact tomorrow at valleygivesback.org. Now back to the show. That was valleygivesback.org. So next little uh, part of this podcast is we sort of come to the home stretch and thanks anybody who's listening. I, I, I am getting a little worried because the number of listeners on our podcast seem to be declining as of late. I guess people are sick of us. It's a little depressing, especially our last two episodes were great. I, I mean, FOI quiz. Yeah. That was, I love that. Maybe it's just too inside baseball. We Maybe talked about people, addiction yeah, yeah, for yeah. an hour. We had an honest discussion about drug addiction and recovery. Come on. Yeah, I, I was, uh, yeah, the... Is that the point where I'm bringing my sick kid in to try to uh, generate some clicks here? Come on, people. I guess the transparency pop quiz doesn't really get the page views uh, burning up the uh, the internet. But, I don't, you know, I've, I've, it, it's, uh, I, I enjoyed it. It's an important discussion to have. But... So this is totally outside our mission as a nonprofit, profit, our, our next topic here. And um, burying this deep into this podcast because we do it. I've learned over the years that if we do this right off the bat, no one wants to uh, to listen to it. But Ethan and I are pretty big movie fans, Netflix guys. Ethan's more of a literature guy, though. He's more uh, he's more fancy pants than I am. Uh, but on the side, I have like this R-rated podcast I do with a screenwriter and a special effects movie guy. Like the, the screenwriter just sold a second screenplay. Unbelievable. So he, 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 he's, he's getting that Roblox money, it sounds like. Shit. Yeah. Buy some t-shirts, man. He got, I mean, I shouldn't gossip about Well, Actually, you know, I, I don't want to gossip about him. But he, I mean, he still works his uh, the job he's had, but he sold a big screenplay, I guess, a year or two ago. He was on the Blacklist, which is a really important Hollywood la-la-la uh, list of unproduced screenplays that have been optioned. And he just, he just sold an option weird, for a second. Of, for years, of course, the blacklist. You you did not want to be on that when it was you know in like the uh, the forties and fifties when it right. was like car Don yeah. Trumbo. Now it's career launching and life changing because it's mm. Holly weird. You know what are you going to say? And the other guy, you know, he he's, he works on the Punisher and all those Netflix shows. Uh, so anyway, and I'm just an idiot who does the podcast with them, argues about their movie taste and stuff. But no one listens to that podcast either. So that's the one theme. Any podcast I'm connected to has uh, very little. Uh, listenership so but i thought we would talk about uh what we've watched lately any movies or, or things we've seen on 
Netflix or cable or anything at all. Because, heck, it's Christmas. We should be allowed. Our gift is to talk about, to ourselves, to talk about just random crap we've seen uh, lately. So, Ethan, after my long-winded wind-up there, mm. have you watched anything lately? Uh, I've, I've, We've talked about this a little um, off-air, but the uh, Netflix recently had a mini-series, I guess you would call it, yep. called Godless with uh, Jeff Bridges... Or, or is it Jeff Daniels? I always mix those. Jeff two Daniels. Up. Jeff, Jeff Daniels. Daniels. Not Jeff Bridges. Jeff Daniels. Excuse me. In a role that um, would traditionally go to a Jeff Bridges, though. Mm, that's yeah. It was Jeff Daniels playing a villain, which was I'm trying to think of a, a, t- a Jeff previous Daniels time Jeff, he's done that. If anybody doesn't know, Jeff Daniels is from like uh, Terms of Endearment back in the day, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, he was he played uh, Colonel Chamberlain in Gettysburg, which is not going to be the part people remember because that was a flop. Let's just <laughs> other than you. The six hour, yeah, Ted Turner produced flop, yes. Um, but yeah, I, I liked it. There were some part, and uh, Michelle Dockery from, uh, um, she's famous for uh, the British show about the servants and the aristocrats that I can't think of. Down Abbey. Oh. Um, she's famous for that. She plays, she's like the other star in it. And, uh, Oh, and they're like the the guy who plays Roy. I mean, I think he's known for some stuff. And then Sam Waterston comes in at some point. You see him being involved, not to give too much away, but it, it's like a western. It's a western, and I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, there were some sort of parts that were either unbelievable or sort of far fetched, or you know, didn't really make sense. The shootout at there's a sh- well I, I gave sort of give, giving away plot points now like there's there's a big shootout like the whole thing's building up to it it's not it's not like you know you, you know what's going to happen eventually um, and that was sort of I mean not the greatest shootout ever done on TV but not the worst either um, but overall I, I liked it I think it's worth you know it's seven episodes it's not like you have to spend a month watching it. And uh, I think it's a worthwhile watch. I agree 100% with everything you said. It is a, it's a traditional, I mean, they're kind of billing it as it, it's a, you know, the female Western, like it's Bad Girls with Drew Barrymore from back in the day. But but it's not really that. It's uh, it's just a good, the, I mean, there's a subplot of basically, you know this from the first episode, in this one town, basically all the men were killed in a mining accident because it's a mining town. And so it's a town of widows who have to basically uh, overcome all the things you usually overcome in, in a Western. But there, there's a lot of decent characters. I, I, I did like it. When uh, Jeff Daniels shows up, they're like, wait a second, I'm watching a, a seven-hour movie here where the bad guy's Jeff Daniels? Really? But by the end of it, you're like, man, that is the best bad guy since Hannibal Lecter, since Anthony Hopkins played Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs in 1991. I mean, he is really good, and I'm surprised... The Western's actually getting, it's, I mean, that uh, Godless is getting sort of bad reviews from what I read, or at least mixed. But the fact that no one's paying attention to Jeff Daniels in that miniseries is a crime. I've also watched uh, Shameless, which is a Showtime series about like a big, People rambunctious that, yeah. Irish family from Chicago. That, William that's H. sort Macy. of like a guilty pleasure. But uh, yeah, if, if you ever... If you're if you grew up in a dysfunctional family, it's uh, it's you could you could uh, find you know uh, find uh, whatever find you could relate to it is what I'm trying to say. So that's a, another recommendation. But lest I go on too much, uh, what it would have. Uh, well, why don't you just? I mean, I'm, I'll run down what else you wrote down here. At some point, the Crown season two. I guess you're looking to see that the Crown season two. I've, I've yeah, never I watched the Crown season one on Netflix, and which, which like it was, it was surprisingly good. I, it's just well acted, I think. Um, and then you I have started, a couple of you have a couple of shows here on Hulu. I've never heard of any of these. Yeah, I don't these, know how to pronounce one of them. Spiral, all, a, a French village, these, and, and Brockle. These are all French uh, TV series. Oh, do we do we really just? Say, oh God! Why don't you just reinforce? You're gonna Those upset really the right wing uh, portion of our leadership. Uh, French our village, leadership. Actually, that's about um, an occupied, like a World War II. Uh, it's about like occupied France, which is like fascinating. I thought historically, Spiral and Bracco. Those are contemporary French police dramas, 
which are really good. And uh, you should watch those. And then on Amazon, I watched uh, The Americans, which is about um, a couple, a family, essentially. The couple, the, the man and wife are uh, Soviet spies living in America in the 1980s. And that's uh, that's good. Like that's also I mean, it's a good drama, but it's also interesting if you grew up in the 80s um, to just see like some of like the throwbacks and some of like the culture, like they play Pong at one point and like they have an Atari and like you you hear like just like the songs that play on the radio. You know, there's like Fleetwood Mac and modern English and stuff. So. And then you have Filmstruck. What is Filmstruck? I don't even know what that is. That's a website where they have all the Criterion collection <sighs> movies, and then I like other, other, a lot of other like independent movies, uh, like the movies that that no longer get made in in Hollywood, as we were just talking about. Um, but I've saw I, the the Three Colors trilogy. I would recommend that by Christoph Kislowski. I tried watching that. I'm not a fan. Which one? The the three, with, any uh, the, I tried watching the colors one, <laughs> just whatever, just a couple of years ago. Maybe it was you who told me about it, and I tried watching it, and I, I don't know. You got to read subtitles. It was ridiculous. And then uh, you could also watch uh, Le Circle Rouge on there. That's I'm, upstairs. Okay. I've never given that back to you. <laughs> that, that's also on Filmstruck, so it's, it's, oh, it's, sign me up. it's okay. Yeah. And what is Le Silence de l'Amour? <laughs> that's another... Uh, Le Circle Rouge is by Jean-Pierre Melville, a revered French director. One of his early films, Le Silence de la Mer, it's about uh, a, a people, it's, a, it's actually about World War II, where uh, people who own this house, a, a Nazi German officer gets posted in their house, and they just... Uh, like they just like ignore him like he comes in like tries to be their friend all the time but they just like they just like blank him and it's just interesting that like that's their method of resistance Fine. it's just like humiliating him that way and then there's there's other developments that you could uh, that you could see all right i'm gonna recommend which no one will i'm gonna recommend it comes at night which is currently streaming if you're an amazon prime person in their video service there and it's a sort of horror movie but not exactly it's like a psychological thriller it's about this family of three who are holed up in their home like in a state in the in the country like out in the woods and there's been something something's happened to the population you you you, you don't really know what but uh another person shows up at their door and uh hilarity ensues so I, I highly recommend it. It's a creepy movie. It's, you know, it's not like The Avengers. It's not like uh, a thrill a minute or, or like The Walking Dead. Uh, it's like a good version of that. Like uh, it treats it, so it kind of plays like a documentary. And then I'm going to go into the video game world with apologies to Chris Bowen, who is uh, a video game journalist. I'm going to recommend Friday the 13th, the game, available for uh, download on PC, PS4, Xbox One, etc. I've been playing that game a lot, and it's it's a game that you. Is that the one with uh, Crystal Lake? Is that where? It's, is that the hockey mask guy, Chris? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's the ho- That's like. Uh, it's that Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't know. I'm not even gonna. I'm just not gonna dignify that with a response because I know our our listenership knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's the Jason, right? Okay. Yeah. It's I think a, I had a game like that for like old school nintendo yes. growing up. yes and that and I, 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 I could never figure it out like it's known for being yeah it's one of the it's, it's a terrible game it, it it has a cult following though because yeah that was purple jason he is he kind of looks like an 80s miami vice who <laughs> he that character appears in this game basically it's an online game you're thrown into a lobby and uh, you play with other people it, it, it helps if you have a microphone it just makes it hilarious because you can talk you essentially you're, you're either a counselor or you're jason about eight people per game you can choose which jason you want to be and then you're at randomly you're either jason or you're a counselor and one of the jasons you can be is that 1984 ish uh, nintendo jason so if you're a counselor suddenly you're getting ch- it's a very violent game it's not for kids in any way it's graphically violent and there's cursing and all that good stuff but you can be butchered by the old uh, nintendo nes 
Jason. So it's a great game. It's a lot of fun. And it's like a random game. It was, uh, uh, you know, the idea came out there and it was crowdfunded. It's not from like a big studio. It took them years to get the money and to put the game together. But it is really a lot of fun. And then on Netflix, my daughter has been watching nonstop Spirit Riding Free, which is about a couple of girls in the Old West and their horses. And uh, I'm almost going to put a warning out there because there's one episode where Spirit gets like lost and gets hurt and the entire episode it's like it's 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 really a horror movie my my daughter was just in tears and screaming and i had to just come in and fast forward the whole thing because uh you know spirit takes a beating so just skip that episode i don't know why it's in there it's a dreamworks thing but they decided to do some like jeremiah johnson type survive the jungle episode thrown in there because these we all know that people who make children's movies and television shows are out of their minds but uh Mm. You know, we've been, it's 46 minutes, Ethan. We can go over what we're going to do this week. Or did you want to... You have an idea on their Valley Indie Christmas mailbag, which I, I hope is not... If, I, we, if we needed filler, I would have uh, done that. But, I, uh, you know, we'll probably take uh, enough time going over next week's, advancing next week's uh, stories. So we don't need to do that. We've got some nice christmas uh, cards from people well let's so you know thank, what? Let's, thank you for let's end by i thought you were gonna you're not gonna judge these christmas cards are you you're not gonna like insult people who sent us christmas cards that's not your plan right no no let's go no. over the christmas cards and we'll end like they forget what's well, you can you, can, you want to know what we're working on go to valleyindy.org people buy an ad maybe uh, actually that's a good point so and let's uh, let's let, next week let's end with uh the, the christmas mailbag well, I guess, yeah, for uh, just uh, we got a card from the uh, Wakely Memorial Funeral Home. John Zalecki, thank you for that. Just going through. We, today, we got a card from the uh, Mavuli family, our landlords here at uh, 158 Main Street in Ansonia. Oh, and nice. also today, we, we got a uh, Christmas card from Mayor Cassetti and family. A uh, picture of them in uh, City Hall celebrating the the season and we also got with it's not a card but we got a nice letter from uh pastor john and his wife maude hinson at the first baptist church in ansonia who uh, recently raised about fifteen thousand dollars for the ansonia police department uh, which the police will use to get uh defibrillators in cars and some ballistic shields um they sent us a, a nice letter thanking us for covering the fundraiser and uh last week we covered the uh we carried it on facebook live the meeting and at which the uh they presented that check to the police department uh yeah, police commission meeting at city hall so kudos thank you for that. to them That's i nice. mean fifteen thousand dollars that is a lot i mean you know yeah. you, that is a that is a size a sizable contribution there so that's pretty amazing and yeah thanks for those christmas yeah, we do we do we save these we put them up it's uh it melts our hearts it, it melts our, our cynic cynical dark local reporter hearts when we get these uh christmas cards so thank you very much definitely all right so for valleyindy.org this has been the weirdest podcast we've done in quite a while but we hope you enjoyed it my name is Eugene Driscoll, and the other guy is Ethan Fry. Read us at valleyindy.org. Talk to you later. For hundreds of years, we brought you the news. For in the info, we gave you the clues. Owners' profits were always sky high. Threatens our lives. Post literation, critical reading, dumbed down nation, signs of inbreeding, TV sucking ideas from our head, public discourse, just about dead. We'll ride the dinosaur. Yeah, ride the dinosaur. Our readers are in the opens each day. Shit.
dinosaur We'll ride the dinosaur Thank you.